Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. You are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. You are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. You are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. You are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. You are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. You are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. You are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. You are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. You are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. You are good and your mercy is forever. Hallelujah. forever hallelujah immortal god invisible god immortal god how great thou art immortal god invisible god immortal god how great thou art immortal god oh invisible god Immortal God, how great thou art, immortal God, invisible God, immortal God, how great thou art, Imaramae, Imaramae, Imarama, Jehovah, Imaramae, Imaramae, Imaramae. Imarama Jehovah Imarama Lo you are good eh Lo you are good eh Lo you are good Jehovah Lo you are good eh Lo you are good eh Lo you are good eh Lo you are good Jehovah Lo you are good eh Imarama eh Imarama eh Imarama Jehovah in Maramayen. I go worship my God, oh. I go shout hallelujah. Me, I go worship my God, oh. My God, it do well for me. Thank you so much, Mr. Tyon Judge. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for always being there, sir. Thank you so much. I welcome you all, those who are joining us, those who are yet to come join us. I welcome you all in the mighty name of Jesus. Even those who will come later on to replay, I welcome you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. I go worship my God. Oh. I go shout hallelujah. Me, I go worship my God. Oh. My God, it do well for me. I go worship my God, oh. I go shout hallelujah. Lord, me, I go worship my God, oh. My God, it do well for me. My God, it's so good. He's so great. My God, it's so good. Is so excellent. My God is so good. He is so great. My God is so good. He is so excellent. 
I go worship my God. Oh. And I go shout hallelujah. Me, I go worship my God. Oh. My God, it do well for me. I go worship my God. Oh. Thank you for joining us, Pastor. I go shout hallelujah. Me, I go worship my God. Oh, my God, do well for me. Kayana Razobra Handa La Rosa. Liana Barusha Kalia Razobra Handa La Rasiana. Lise Brunda Raswana Barusha Kalia Razobra Handa La Rasiana. Liana Barusha Kaliana La Rasiana Barusha Ka. Liaza Barasiana Barusha Kaliana Rasiana Baruza Brahanda La Rusha Ka. Ele, 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 oh, now you start a you go finish a ele, 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 oh, now you start a you go finish a Jemmy worship God. Ele, 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 oh. Now you start a mo. You go finish a mo. Cause seasons come and seasons go. But you, oh Lord, you never change. Seasons come and seasons go. But you, oh God, you never change. Challenges come and challenges go. But you, oh God, you never change. Situations come and situations go. But you, oh God, you never change. Oh, seasons come and seasons go. But you, oh God, you never change. Seasons come and seasons go. But you, oh God, you never change. Kingdoms rise and kingdoms fall. But you, oh God, you never change. Kingdoms rise and kingdoms fall. But you, oh God, you never change. Rulers rise, oh, and rulers fall. But you, oh God, you never change. Rulers rise and rulers fall. But you, oh God, you never change. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. We set our hearts on you. Come and do what you do. We set our hearts on you, oh God. Please do what only you can do. We need more. La zubranda la rusha kaliara rasiana. Li zebranda raswana barusha kaliara rasibranda. Begin to talk to God. Begin to exalt the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Begin to worship Him. Li zebranda la zubranda la rusha ka. Kiana bararasiana baruza branda la rasibranda. Liana Barusha Kaliara Rasobra Handa La Rosa. Lord, we give you all the glory and we give you all the honor. Be thou exalted in our midst. Be thou exalted in our lives. Oh Father, we give you all the glory. We exalt your holy name. Liza Brunda La Rusha Kaliara Zobra Handa La Rasiana. Liza Baraswana Barusha Kaliara Zobra Handa La Rasiana. Oh Father, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We give you all the glory, Jesus. 
We give you all the honor, Jesus. We exalt your holy name, O God. Lise Brunda Raswana Barusha Kaliana Rasi Brahanda La Rosa. Lise Brasha Handa Balara Rasiana. Liana Barusha Kaliana Rasiana Barusa Brahanda La Rasiana. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. We are here for you. Come and do what you do. We set our hearts on you. Come and do what you do. Cause we need more. Oh, thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you for today. We thank you for each and every one here. Thank you, Lord, for Pastor Richard. Thank you for Elder Tyon Judge. Thank you. We give you all the glory and we give you all the honor. Lord, thank you. We are here, Lord, to just say thank you. Father, we commit this day into your hands. We pray, Lord, that you take absolute control over this session. We pray that you take absolute control over every word spoken here. That, Lord, the words that were spoken here today will be spirit and life. Thank you, because someone's life is about to be transformed. Someone's life is about to be changed. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Amen. Oh, thank you guys so much for joining us. Always a pleasure having you here. Pastor Rich, how are you doing? Trust God you are doing good. Oh, I was so blessed by your right up. You should do something more to that, right? Because I was thinking. <laughs> oh, Eva Abril. We miss you so much, Ma. You have been missing. I only see you comment on videos. We have not seen you in the live sessions for a while. How are you doing? So glad to have you today. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Glad to see you, Ma. Glad to have you join us today. Pastor Rich, I was saying you've got to do something more with your write-ups. But then, even at the writing point, don't, don't, don't neglect what you are doing. 2017, 2018, I used to write out teachings on Facebook. And it see, I, I was writing teachings mostly on marriage and relationships. And it seemed like nothing was happening. As a matter of fact, even to get likes. I wasn't even getting likes. At some point, I felt like I'm just wasting my time. Maybe I should just stop it. But I just felt like, okay, let me just put it there. Maybe one day someone will see it. Maybe one day it will help someone. But then, I be, one after the other, people started telling me, verbally, say, I've been blessed by your teachings. I've been blessed by your teachings. Some even told me, I... <laughs> okay, you have been there, right? <laughs> And then I was amazed and people that I, I couldn't even imagine. Some told me they felt like because I was teaching on marriage and relationships. I remember even getting uh, getting to meet one of my exes on the and and he said, why I like the things I said, they, they got to him like I was talking to him and I was like, You read my post. And then I saw people who were struggling with relationships and they say, and they were telling me, you have, your teachings have been a help. And then I saw, why can't you just, just like? Why can't you just like? Why can't you just comment? Why are people like this? <laughs> and I was like, so even my ex miss, so when he said that, I was like, okay, then people really follow me. I thought it was only my husband following me. Even So people will follow you. But they, they just will not even like or comment. So if you are waiting for to see that, to, to get motivated, 
you, you might likely never see it. So just keep doing what you are doing. But sometimes, you know, many people don't like reading. So there are things that you could do. Maybe you, 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 you might want to put images together if you, you, even if it's just posting once a week. You, you know, you can go on YouTube with search right up. Just put, put images together, create a video, and then you are just reading it out and synchronizing it. With with, 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 with with the images. Just reading it out to someone it, it, and just post it. Just leave it out there like a video. Or maybe you can just put even a picture and let it just be an audio reading behind the picture. Like, like let it be like a, it's an audio, but you, you can post it up. So put it, try to, try, try to bring it because not everyone writes, likes reading. You can add it. Just be innovative. The Holy Spirit will tell you what to do. <laughs> Hallelujah. But for the meantime, I have a word for someone I did not come. And today I'm energetic. I'm not exhausted. I have rested. <laughs> I've rested. Eva, where have you been? We are about to read from the book of Exodus. Exodus chapter 3. From verse 1 to 17, when you have when you are chanced. Amen. Amen. I'm glad. You can you can update it, upgrade it, beat it up. You will be amazed at the people that come back with a testimony. Say, I was I I, I was I, I, I was discouraged in, in, in life, or I was down about something, and and I and I came across, I, I came across your video. I came across and the words minister to me. You'll be amazed. Hallelujah. Exodus. Um, let me start reading. I'm reading from the King James. I might get to Amplified. You know I love the Amplified. I might read some verses from the Amplified if need be. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the mountain of God, even to, to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him. When I start reading, I feel tempted to start explaining some things. But then I'm feeling maybe if I read and complete the reading, maybe someone who is coming later. Let me just read. It says, and the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of the bush. And he looked and behold, the bush burned with fire and the bush was not consumed. How God will call your att attention to some things. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight. Why the bush is not burned. Why is the bush burning but not being consumed? Moses said, "I would want. I let me go closer and look at it. Exactly what God was want, what God intended to get His attention. And when the Lord saw that He turned aside to see, God called unto Him. You see what God wanted happened. Oh, Talita, so glad to have you today, ma'am. How are you doing?" God bless you. Always a pleasure having you. And the Lord saw that he turned aside to see. God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here am I. So the fire was just a, a mechanism for God to get his attention. I don't know what has, what has God done in order to get your attention. Because every now and then, God will use scenarios to attract us to himself. And he said, draw not nigh, hither. Put off thy shoes from off thy feet. For the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. He says, don't come closer. Oh, Elder Fire, good morning. We missed you yesterday. God tells Moses, don't come closer. Remove your shoes, for where you are standing is holy ground. 
Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. Take note of that. Take note of that. When I saw that, I was amazed. This was Moses' first encounter with God. And the Bible says Moses hid his face. For he was afraid to look at God. To look upon God. He, Moses was afraid to look at God. Moses was, was afraid. The same Moses. That later on we hear telling God that I will not go unless you go with me. Say your presence and your angel are not enough to go with me. Unless your presence go with me I will not go. The same Moses that later on. Tells God, I want to, if I have found favor in your sight, I want to see you face to face. The same Moses, someone said process. Process. That's to let us know that where you are is not where you are going to end. Where you are is not where you are going to end. God is taking you somewhere. There is coming a time when God will walk right into your room and talk to you one on one. There is a time in your future when God will talk to you in a way that you better understand. So it's okay if you don't hear him clearly right now. It's okay if you don't understand the way he talks to you right now. No, just keep just just just, just keep on walking with him. Just keep walking with him. There is a time that he will not need to, to burn fire to get the attention of Moses. So right now he will have to talk to, 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 to tell someone. He may have to tell me to tell you to take a retreat. There's a time that you are going to be so hungry for God that you decide to take a retreat and God is telling you it's okay, end it here. And you tell God, I don't want to leave your presence. Right now I'm the one telling you take a retreat. Make out a day. Pray to God. Come online. Join me in our live sessions. Hear the word of God. There is a time when you are going to be the one sharing the word of God. Someone say, process. Hallelujah. I just cannot read without, without sharing. Because there are some highlights that I just, they just fall on me as I'm reading. And if I leave it, I might forget it. So just bear with me. And the Lord said, I have surely seen the affliction and of my people which are in Egypt and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters. For I know their sorrows. Can, who, who was with me when, who was there when we were talking about complaining and how the Israelites kept on complaining and wanting to, to go back to Egypt? Can you imagine God did all this demonstration, causing the fire to burn and everything, just to come to Moses, to tell Moses that he has seen the cry of his people. He has seen their sorrows. He has heard their cry. God says, and I am come down to deliver them. God personally came down. As we read this, you see how ungrateful the Israelites were. He says, and I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up out of, out of, the, out of that land into a good land, a large land, unto the land flowing with milk and honey, unto a place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. That's to let you know that the land was not a barren land. There were people occupying the land. But God says he is taking them to that land, so he's giving them the land. It doesn't matter who was in that place. It doesn't matter who was in that land. What matters is the fact that God says he is giving that land to you. He is taking you to that land. So it doesn't matter who was occupying that job before now. What matters is the fact that God says he is taking you to the position of a manager. I just prophesied to someone. It doesn't matter who was occupying that position. What matters is the fact that God has said, I have raised up an Esther. 
and she is about to get and, and I want to send her into the palace for such a time like this to bring expansion and deliverance to the people of God. So it doesn't matter who was in the palace before Esther because God has raised an Esther. God has made an Esther. God has prepared an Esther for such a time like this. What whoever was there, somehow, somehow God is going to evict a, 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 what's that? A Vashti from the palace. Somehow Vashti will get to misbehave because her time in the in the palace is over. Because she is not fulfilling the purpose for which she was sent. Because she is not doing the best that she was supposed to do in the palace. So when it is time for God to do something, it doesn't matter who is in that position the problem with us is that most often we look at that place and we look at who is in that position or who is the boss there or who is occupying the land and you tell god it is impossible don't you know where your impossibility stands and that's where god's possibility begins what is impossible with you is possible with god and this is what the israelites failed to understand because if they had understood this that this is what god said so god was not ignorant of the fact that they were giants in the land he was not ignorant of the fact that there were enemies in the land. God said it from the word go. From the first time he told Moses that he is taking them to a land flowing with milk and honey. A land that is big and large and comfortable. He made it known to them that there are people occupying the land. That's why God was so angry when, he, when they later on sent people to go and spy on the land. They came back with a bad report saying there are giants in the land. Saying we cannot go there, there are giants there. God is like, what did I tell you? As if I'm going, I'm running helter skelter in the. God is not going gaga. God is not sure. He knew there were giants in the land, but He still gave you the land. He knew there were people occupying the land. The enemies were there, but He still gave you the land. So don't bring a negative report and you're expecting like God is like, oh my God, no, I'm God. What is happening? Oh, Peter, Michael, did you know there were people in the land? What do we do? Now that my people are in the wilderness, where do we take them from? Where do we take them to? Where, which other land do we give? God is not running helter skelter. God knew there were people in the land. So when God tells you he will do something, he will do it irrespective of the obstacle, irrespective of what's the possibility that an orphan girl like Esther will find herself in the palace that is impossible with man what's the possibility but there is a god in heaven that will give esther favor with the king give esther favor with the cup bearer give esther favor with the with, with with the personality that is preparing the virgins and give esther the grace to remain a virgin all in preparation to take her to the palace so whatever god has told you he is able to bring it to come to pass don't mind we are not reading yet. We are not preaching yet. It's just still reading. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So God was not surprised that there were enemies in the land. Now, therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me. And I have also seen the oppression where would the Egyptians oppress them? Come now, therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. And Moses said unto him, listen to what Moses said. And I believe someone here must be guilty of saying that to God. Who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh? And that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt. And he said, certainly, I will be with you. Moses says, who am I to do all these things that you are talking about? Who am I to appear before Pharaoh? Who am I? Let me not talk much there. Almost like what some of us have been saying, the moment we knew God wants to use us. You are like, God, I'm not qualified. Who am I? How can you use me to preach the gospel? I have this and this weakness. God, don't you know? God knows. And then God says, I will be with you. It doesn't matter the limitations you have. As long as God is with you, you can fulfill that purpose. God says, certainly I will be with thee. 
and this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee. When thou hast brought forth the people of Egypt, ye shall serve God upon this mountain. Guess the mountain they were in, Mount Horeb. You know what Horeb means? Horeb means wilderness. Horeb means a wasteland. Horeb means a desolate place. So yes, God is taking you to, the, to, to a land flowing with milk and honey. But there is a place where he wants you to worship him. So you see why God had, another reason why God had to be very angry at the Israelites. They were supposed to worship him in the wilderness. The wilderness was a place where they were supposed to see the mighty hand of God, see the mighty works of God, and worship him. God expects nothing from them apart from praise, thanksgiving, and worship. That's what God expected from them. Yes, ever God is good. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, the God of your fathers has sent me unto ye, unto you. And they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? And God said unto Moses, I am that I am. I like that definition of, I, I like that name. I am that I am. And he said, Thus shall thou say unto the children of Israel, I am has sent me unto thee. That's verse 14. Let me read from the Amplified. I love the way the Amplified said it. And God said to Moses, I am who I am and what I am and I will be what I will be. Did you hear that? I am who I am. I am what I am, and I will be what I will be. And he said, you shall say this to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. Hallelujah. And God said moreover unto Moses, Thus shall thou say unto the children of Israel, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, and the God of Jacob has sent me unto you. This is my name forever. And this is my memorial unto, the, unto all generations. Go and gather the elders of Israel together. And say unto them, the Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, appeared unto me saying, I have surely visited you and seen that which is done to you in Egypt. And I have said, I will bring you up out of the affliction of Egypt into the land of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, unto the land flowing with milk and with honey. Hallelujah. When you have a chance, you can finish reading the story. You can finish. It's an, it's an amazing passage. But I believe each and every one of us have come across it. We have heard about it. So, Father, thank you for you. the entrance of your word. Give it light and understanding to the, to the simple. Thank you for your word that is about to be a blessing to someone. Thank you, Lord. Bless someone through this word in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Now, let us... Let me... Oh, Nisha. Good morning. So glad to have you here. Always a pleasure, ma'am. Let, let, let me take you a bit back, a little back to where to be, be before this chapter 3. Because chapter 3 begins with Moses already taking care of the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law. Now, M Moses was a Hebrew, born that way. And at the time when Moses was born, there was a command. The Bible says there arose a pharaoh, a king in Egypt that did not know Joseph. Isn't that sad? After all the exploits that Joseph did for Egypt, how can a king rise up that doesn't know about Joseph? Does it mean that it was not in their archives that they arose a great prime minister that was wiser than every other king? 
How come a king could arise in Egypt that did not know Joseph? And then this king looks at the way the Israelites were growing and, and, and says the way these people are growing fast, if we don't do something to, 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 to stop them, they are going to overtake us. And if there is a war or, or, a, or, or a battle, they are going to likely support the enemy and then they will beat us. So the king decides that they should kill every 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 Hebrew child that was born. And the nurses, the midwives had the fear of God. So they denied to do it. And when the king asked them, they said the Hebrew women were so violent in giving birth that the children came out so violently. That's where the saying came that they will now we pray for people that they, will, they should give birth as, a, as Hebrew women. Actually, that, that, that was, that's where it, that, was, that came from. So then, they, 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 when, when the king realizes that nothing can be done, he decides now to kill all the male children. Isn't it amazing why, that, that every time a deliverer is born, there is also a destroyer that is in, in power? No problem, no problem. Just listening is good enough for us. Isn't it amazing? If, if it happens once, we could say accident, but when you see it once and twice, know it is a pattern. By the time that Moses was born, there was a Pharaoh that gave a decree that every male child should be killed. By the time that Jesus was born, there was a Herod that gave a decree that every male child should be killed. Isn't it visible to you that every time a, a savior, every time a deliverer is born, there is always a destroyer, there is always an adversary that rises up to ensure that that, that, that deliverer doesn't live to see, the, to, to see that purpose fulfilled. So why do you think you and your own purpose that God has called you to fulfill, why do you think the devil will fold his hands and watch you fulfill that purpose? The same thing, the same thing that happened in the time of Moses, happened in the time of, of Jesus. Just like Jesus came to deliver us from the hands of the devil, that's how Moses was supposed to be the deliverer, to deliver the people from Egypt, to deliver the people from the world. So if we are to use a typing shadow, typology is using a, 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 some other thing, maybe an object, and then the, a place something to represent some other thing. We will say Moses, the life of Moses and the deliverance was a typing shadow of what Jesus was to come and do. And we see this further in the book, I believe Numbers chapter 21, where the Israelites complained and then God sent serpents to, to, to kill them. And when they cried to Jesus, to, to Moses, sorry, God told Moses to raise up a, a browsing serpent that everyone who is bitten by the, by the serpent and looks up to that, to, to, to that golden serpent will be healed. Just the same thing like, 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 like Jesus coming in the New Testament and was raised up on the cross. And whoever looks up to him and says, Jesus is Lord over my life, they will be healed. They will be delivered. They will not be condemned. So every time they, they God sends forth a deliverer, the devil sends forth an adversary. Now I'm still giving us some background information. So the Bible says that when Moses is born, the mother of Moses, that most Bible versions don't even see the need, like her, her identity was not that important, like they didn't give her name. But then the woman was so spiritual that she looked at the child and said, no, this child needs to be hidden. She looked at the child and she could perceive greatness in the child. And she hid the baby for three months. How did she hide a child, a baby? We have been live here and you hear my baby crying. How could she hide the baby for three months? And then after three months, the child could no longer be hidden. And the Bible says she put the baby in a basket and placed the baby in the river. Now, 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 he, this is the miracle. When you are a man of purpose, 
When you have a great destiny, the best the devil can do is just try, but they can never kill you. Because the supernatural hand of God will always intervene to preserve you, will always intervene to, to guide you. The miracle was not that the, the, the baby entered into the basket and flew right to where uh, Pharaoh's daughter was. The miracle was the fact that the Israelites, the Hebrews were considered as slaves. So they used to do their laundry and take their bath down the, the down down uh, on the downer side of the river. Whereas the, 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 the Egyptians used the upper side of the other the upper part of the river. Meaning, in other words, when Moses' mother was living, where she dropped the child, was at the lower side of the river, and instead of the basket flowing and going down, the, the basket flew opposite the current to get right to where the daughter of Pharaoh was. And the daughter of Pharaoh saw the child, loved the child, and decided. And then there was the, 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 there was Miriam, who was Moses' elder sister, following the basket. And, 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 and when the daughter of Pharaoh saw the child, Miriam came up and said, I know a woman who can take that child, who can take care of that child for you. And Moses' mother was paid to do what she was normally supposed to pay to do. So when God is giving you that kind of opportunity, that's something that you normally do for free. God will give you an opportunity and you will earn money out of it. So this is Moses now. Moses grows up in the palace. Grows up as the daughter, as the son of Pharaoh, as the, as the son of Pharaoh's daughter. But the Bible says at some point, Moses, when Moses in the book of Hebrew 11, the Bible says when, when Moses came of age, he understood that he was a Hebrew and refused. He refused to be called Pharaoh's, Pharaoh's daughter's son. Yesterday I was telling us that one of the issues why marriages fail is when you get married as a child. And, and I told us that marriage is not for boys, it's for men. One of the difference between a boy and a man is that a man understands where they came from. A man understands their identity. When Moses was a child, Moses would have been comfortable with all the pleasures in the palace. But when he came, when he became mature, he denied to be as to, to be associated with the palace, irrespective of the pleasures, irrespective that the Hebrews were slaves, irrespective that the Hebrews were low lives. But he he decided when he discovered his identity, he would rather be. If he was still a boy, he would have preserved the comfort in the palace. But as a mature man, he would rather be the Hebrew that he is, rather than take that than take upon a false identity. And the Bible says one of the days it so happened that an Egyptian was was, was beating up a, a Hebrew. And Moses, because you are called, the call of God over your life is older than, than, than you. So before you even discover you are called, the call has been there. The other day we saw the Samaritan woman. And I was telling us that this is a woman who is wired to be an evangelist of all times. So, but in the inside of her, there is that wiring for greatness. But in the inside, she doesn't know who she's supposed to be. So she keeps going from one man to another because she knows there is something pulling her from one man to another. But then she, she gets married to this man. Oh, thank you. Thank you, sir. She gets married to this man. She is not fulfilled. She gets to the next man. is not fulfilled. Because from the inside, there is a wiring for that purpose. There is a wiring, there's a greatness in the inside of you. But until you come to discover the purpose, it, the devil is going to take advantage of it. So that is Moses now at the point where he has come of age and there is that greatness, there is the burden to deliver his people in the inside. There is a wiring to deliver as a, there is a wiring of a deliverer in the inside of him. It's, he is burning with that desire. But then he doesn't know how to go about it because he has not been trained. Someone say, once more say process. He has not been trained yet. So he doesn't know how to go about it. And I guess he felt like he, he was supposed to start killing the Egyptians one after the other. So he catches this Egyptian, kills him, and buries him in the sand. Because when we are still young and immature, yes, sir, process. When we are still young and immature, the wiring is already there for your purpose. 
That's why at the age of 12, Jesus enters into, into the temple and spends three days. The parents look for him all over Jerusalem. And then he's asking them casually, like, why were you guys looking for me? Don't you know I'm supposed to go about my father's business? At what age? At what age are you supposed to go about your father's business? Because there is a wiring in the inside that tells you there is a necessity. Necessity is laid upon you to do this thing. But you have not been prepared for it. And I told us that God will love you the way you are. God will embrace you the way you are. But God will never use you the way you are. So if you are to be used of God, if you are called of God, get ready to go through the process of God. Because God is more interested in making you than in using you. God is more in interested in making you than in using you. God doesn't want to use you in acts. God wants you to become. God doesn't want to use you to, 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 deliver, to deliver the people. God wants to make you a deliverer. Preparation. If the Son of God came and had to be prepared, who are you? Who am I? And you know what? Before he, before Jesus could come back in the power of the Spirit, as soon as he was baptized, he was led to the wilderness by the Holy Spirit. He was led to the wilderness. So don't feel like you have gone wrong when you find yourself in wilderness places. No, you have not done anything wrong. When you find yourself in wilderness places, no, you are most likely in the process. Even if it is the work of the devil, no, God is using it to work things out for your good. God is using it to effect, to, 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 to work things out, to prepare you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But we are still looking at, we are, we are coming up to, 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 to the chapter, chapter 3 now. So Moses kills this guy and, and buries him thinking no one saw it. And then the next time now he sees two Hebrews fighting and he goes up to them and tells them, say, why you are, you guys are brothers. Why should you fight? It's not good for you to fight. And then they tell, they, they ask him, what do you, what will you do? Do you want to kill and bury us the same way you did to that Egyptian? And then Moses realizes that someone saw him. So he discovers that he is not saved. And, and there and then, there and then, oh, thank you, thank you, Eva, thank you for that. There and then, even the, the Bible says, even Pharaoh was after him. So Moses becomes a fugitive. In a land where he is supposed to be in authority, he becomes a fugitive. And see, to let you know that wherever, whatever you are going, when you are a man of purpose, when you are a woman of purpose, everything that happens to you, that's why God says in, in Jeremiah chapter, chapter 29 verse 11, the, the message Bible, he says, I know what I'm doing. I have it all planned out. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to prosper you and plans to take care of you and not to abandon you. Plans to give you the future that you desire. Oh, Malavi, thank you for joining us. He says, I know what I'm doing. I have it all planned out. I know what I'm doing. I have it all planned out. The problem with that verse is that he knows what he's doing, but you don't know what he's doing. Most of the time, you don't know what he's doing. Most of the time, we don't know what he's doing. So he's the only one who knows what he's doing. So the reason why you're going through that process and you're grumbling and you want to give up is because he knows what you're doing, but what he's doing, but you don't know what he's doing. So he takes Moses to prove that his hand was there. Takes Moses straight to the place that is supposed to be wilderness. Oh my God. So, so someone just saw, just saw someone that, that, that looks like a family member. <laughs> Talita, you recognize that name? <clears throat> so, God takes Moses, leads Moses to a place where he is a fugitive, and Moses gets married to the daughter of Jethro, who is a priest. Is that not like Moses going on internship? And guess what he's doing? Taking care of the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law. Who here has realized that the most of the people that God uses, he starts by, by, by teaching you how to take care of the flock. This is Moses taking care of the flock. That was David, who was apparently rejected, 
the one that was considered the, 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 the son of a, of a prostitute, apparently, because his, his destiny, it seems like he, he was a result of a one night stand of, 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 of Jesse, his father. <laughs> I knew that. I knew that. So this is, so you realize that most often, before God will give you a flock, give you his own people as a flock, he first trains you on how to be a flock to the sheep. Before God takes you to manage real people, he will first take you to manage some situations, to manage finances, to manage some things. So we realize that people that God is that God will put in position to, 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 to be in control over God's people. God starts by taking them to a place where they were supposed to, 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 to shepherd the flock. So where it means that what happened to Moses was not a mistake. So Moses, this is Moses. Can you imagine Moses was a, was a shepherd? He was, he was in hiding for 40 years. May my obscurity never be that long. God, please. For 40 years, he was in training. And when God realized that he is done with his training, that's when God decides to appear to him. When he, he, he started going, taking the shepherd to, 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 to the, the sheep, the flock, to the place where God wanted his sheep to be. That's when God decides to appear to him. That's where we find ourselves. God appears to him with an encounter, with an encounter and, 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 and causes a fire to, 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 to burn, but the bush is not consumed, just so that he can get his attention, just so that he can attract him. And Moses sees it and, and follows. And when God, the Bible says the moment God realized that he, that he has seen the sight and is coming, God calls upon him. And says, Moses, Moses, he says, take off your shoes so you are standing on holy ground. God says, take off your shoes, you are standing on holy ground. Shoes talks about position. God says, where you are right now, take strip of yourself of everything that you have. Strip of yourself of every position. Strip of yourself of every personality, every title. God says, I want uh, this encounter I'm giving you, I want to use you. But I don't want you to come to me like someone who has, who has made it in life. I don't want you to come to me like someone who was raised in the palace. I don't want you. I want you to come to me the way you are. I want you to come to me. God says, remove your shoes. You are standing on holy ground. Remove your shoes. Don't come to me with anything. Just come to me like you are. I want to use you just the way you are. No titles, no properties, nothing. You alone, the way you are, are good to go. You are okay the way you are. You don't need any accessories. And then God begins to tell him about what he has in store. And I love that when he asks God, who do I tell the Israelites that sent me? He says, I am that I am. Before he says that, he first tells them. That's our God. He first tells him. He first tells him that, that I am the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And every time I hear that name, I'm always so happy because God didn't say he is the God of Israel. No, we know that Jacob, Jacob wrestled with God back in, it's still in the book of, it's still Genesis, where he wrestled with God and, 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 and with, with, with the angel, which is with God, and, and God pierces his hip and changes his name from, from, from Jacob to Israel. That was the encounter because Jacob means scammer. Jacob means supplanter. Jacob means thief. So his personality was changed from Jacob to Israel. So Israel was who God created him to be. Jacob was what was the personality. So by reason of what he was wired to be from the inside, that's another example. So he wanted to help God. He wanted to get the, the inheritance by, by tricks because he knew by the wiring in the inside that that inheritance belongs to him. The blessing belongs to him. But he used tricks to get it instead of letting God work. So God brought him to a point where God had to transform him from Jacob to Israel. But when God is referring
referring to him, God doesn't call him the God of Jacob of Israel. God calls him the God of, of, of Jacob. You know what that means? Even when you were still in that mess, God still called you his own. Even when you were in that at that fallen state, God still called you in his own. At that point in time when you didn't even know God, when you were living a life that does not glorify him, when you had not even said Jesus is Lord, God still considered you his own. So when God is telling, God is proud of you, he's proud of everything about you. He's proud of everything concerning you. God loved Honorine from the time Honorine was born, before even Honorine was born. Even when Honorine was all messed up, even when Honorine was fallen, even when Honorine was in a state that could not stand, he, she was so unpure to get before God. God still loved her. So when God is calling me now, God says he, he, he is the God of Honorine. No, God doesn't want to identify. He doesn't say he is the God of Pastor Honorine. No, God is the God of Honorine. Yes, even that Honorine that was once upon a time messed up. Yes, that Richard that once upon a time did not know God. God is he, 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 God was we are God back then. That, 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 that purest fire that once upon a time was against God. God was with you. That malady that was against God, that was in a mess some time ago. God was with you. So God comes to tell us every time he says he is the God of Jacob, it makes it gives me an assurance and it gives the unbeliever an assurance that everyone is worthy before God. Everyone has an opportunity to run to him. Everyone has an opportunity. Kaya Zabara Zobrahanda Lara it makes me understand. Kaza Brundara Sobrahanda. I'm doing the best I can, sir. Thank you. I'm doing the best I can. He is the God of Abraham. You call him the father of faith. He's the God of Isaac, the child of the promise. But he's also the God of Jacob. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Pastor Rich, thank you. I love it when you say that. He is the God of Abraham, the father of faith. He is the God of Isaac, the, the, the promised child. But he is also the God of Jacob. Not the God of the trans. No, not the God of the transformed, you know. The God of Jacob. He is also the God of that unbeliever. He is also the God of that sinner. He is also the God. I, I told us God will judge some of us. We are all worthy. We are all worthy. We are all worthy. The problem is that now that we are worthy, now that we have found, we have realized that we are worthy and we are in that place, in that right place. The problem is that when, when, when we become Israel, we forget that once upon a time we were once Jacob. And now you are unable to, 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 to look at another person who is behaving and having the attributes that Jacob once had. You look at them and you say, see this unbeliever, this one will not make heaven. No, God is the God of Jacob. He was your God at that point in time. That's why he came to you. That's why he wrestled with you. That's why he asked you. The Bible says at some point after the wrestling, God asked, asked Jacob, God asked him, what, what, what is your name? And, and, and the Bible says, it, it dawned on him that his, uh, that his name was Jacob. It means what he has been manifesting all along. He, did, he was not even conscious. He was not even conscious. He knew there was a wiring for greatness. There was a wiring for the, for, for the blessing. But all along, he had been considered a scammer. He had been considered a supplanter. He has been considered a thief. And he didn't know that identity was what was prompting him to act the way he was acting. And the Bible says God came to him. He, he didn't go to God. God came to him. And God wrestled with him to get him to the point where when he asked him, he says, what is your name? He said, the Bible says it dawned on him. It dawned on him. Pastor Rich, can you get me that scripture? It's in the book of Genesis. But I've forgotten the particular chapter and verse. The Bible, the, the, the verse that God asked him after wrestling with God. God asked him, say, what is your name? And the Bible says it, 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 it dawned on him. He came to the realization that he was Jacob, that he was a scammer, that he was a supplanter. And he realized it is it dawned on him that this is the identity I have been having. There is someone who is still in sin. There is someone who is coming. There is someone who is a thief. There is someone, it has not dawned on them that that, 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 that is bad. It has not dawned on them that this thing that they are struggling and stealing to gain, that's the same blessing that God created them to have. 
cheaply. That's the same thing. That's the same purpose that you were supposed to fulfill. But you are trying to get it by yourself. Someone, God is waiting to encounter them. God is waiting to wrestle them. And sometimes God is going to use you. God may not use, he may not descend like he did with Jacob. But he may use you. You are, you are now like a messenger of God. This message was titled from mess to a messenger. Oh, thank you. Thank you, sir. This message is titled from mess to a messenger. The problem is that when, whenever you have become a messenger, you forget that God brought you to the point where you are a messenger so that he could send you back to others. The reason why he delivered you from the mess is so that he could send you as a messenger back to other people who are still in the mess so that you go to them and you deliver them so that he can use you to deliver them. How we become comfortable with, with, with being called Israel. How we become comfortable with, with the new status that we have had. How we are the ones who could condemn the, the Jacobs and we forget that once upon a time you were not born Israel you were born as Jacob you grow up as Jacob you got the blessing as Jacob you got your wives as Jacob and now that God has shown you mercy encountered you and transformed you from Jacob to Israel you are looking at another person and you are condemning them for being Jacob that's who you used to be Please, if you have not given the video a thumbs up, please do me the favor. And thank you so much for joining us if you are just joining us. God says, I am the God of Abraham, the father of faith. I am the God of Isaac, of Isaac, the son of the promise. But I am also the God of Jacob. That one that you are turning your back on. That, oh, Malavita, why do I feel like I'm talking to you? I feel like this word is for you. God is also the God of Jacob. Not the God of Israel. The God of, of Jacob. The message is from mess to the messenger. From mess to a messenger. From mess. Oh, ADM, thank you so much for joining us. Glad to have you. Thank you so much. Just stay tuned and I guarantee you will be blessed. Oh, Monica. So amazing to have you. I'm loving this congregation today. <laughs> God, this is permanent in the name of Jesus. Lord, this is permanent in the name of Jesus. So every time, so God starts by introducing himself to let Moses know that he is the God of the qualified and he's also the God of the unqualified. Come on. Come on, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit just told me, say, God is the God of the qualified and he's also the God of the unqualified. So the problem is that the moment you become qualified, you fail to realize that the God, you, you, you were once unqualified. You fail to understand or realize that the God who qualified you is still in the business of qualifying others. So you are not in this place. You are not called a messenger because you are qualified. You are a messenger because he qualified you. And he qualified you so that you can go transform another Jacob into, a, a, into Israel. And that Jacob will also in return be qualified to go to another. So imagine if everyone of us, if we were winning just at least one soul, one soul, you commit yourself, even if in one year, you want just one soul for Christ. Even if in one month, you want just one soul for Christ. And that one soul wins another soul. And that one soul wins another soul. That's, imagine the number of souls that will be won in your name. Imagine how much celebration. The, the only time that there is celebration in heaven is when a soul is won. You would have put heaven in a perpetual state of partying. But the problem is that we are busy being the missing, be, 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 being Israel and we forget about Jacob. We have been transformed and we forget that there are other people who still need transformation. You have been qualified and you feel like you are the only qualified person. No, there are other people that can equally be qualified. The qualifier is still alive. But then now that's not my point. That was just an aside. But it blessed me. I hope it blessed you too. God goes ahead now to tell Moses. So when you go tell the people that I am 
who I am. I am who I am. Now, when we are talking about most of the, the names of God, there is also, always Jehovah that, that is put in front. Jehovah, Jireh, Jehovah, Nisi, Jehovah, Rapha. So there is always a Jehovah. Jehovah means to become. The word Jehovah means to become. So you know why I love this word that God, this name that God gave to, 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 to Moses? He says, I am who I am. It means I don't have any particular definition. I become who you expect, who you want me to be. I become to you who you expect me to be. I become to you who you need me to be at that point in time. Some time ago, my father taught a message. And he says, every time you are in need, it is a pointer at the dimension of God that, 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 that you want God to reveal to you. So meaning if you are in need of provision, it means it is an indication that you need more of God. So the more you need God, the more you seek God, God is about to reveal himself to you as Jehovah Jireh. If you, if you, if you need God for healing, it's an indication that if you need healing, it's an indication that you need more of God. As you seek God, you, he reveals himself to you as Jehovah Rapha. So every time that we are in need, it is a pointer to what we need, to the dimension of God that we need. So every time that you need a dimension of God, God shows himself up to you. So to one person, to Abraham, who at that point in time needs a lamb, God provide, God shows up as Jehovah Jireh because he becomes the he becomes the provider. But when he comes to you who needs healing, he becomes Rapha. When he comes to, 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 to David who was at war, he becomes his banner. When he goes to you who needs who needs a touch? He becomes the God that touches people. When he comes to you, who needs salvation? He becomes your savior. God, he says, I am who I am. I don't have any particular personality, but I become who you want me to be. I become who you want me to be. I become who you need me to be at that point in time. So I have the ability to become anything. I have the ability to become everything. I have the ability to meet you at the point of your need. So I don't have... Yes, I might have been Jehovah Jireh to Abraham. But now that I'm coming to you, I am not coming to you only as a provider. Because I want to show myself to the Israelites. I am about to be the God that plagues the land of Egypt. I am about to be the God of signs and wonders. I am about to be the God that provides manna. I am about to be the God that causes water to come out of the rock. I am about to be the God that fights the, the Amalekites when they attack you in the wilderness. I am about to be the God... So I will be limited if I give you a particular name because there is more to me than a particular personality. I am about to show myself to the Israelites in a dimension that I've never shown before. I am about to become I feel the Holy Ghost all over this place. He says, go to them and tell them that I am sent you. Because they had known, Abraham known that he was the Almighty. And then later on knew that he was, this, the, he was Jehovah Jireh. But I'm about to, to introduce myself in a dimension that none of the Israelites has ever seen. So he says, go back. And if we read beyond that, and then, this is Moses standing now at the point where he has stripped off his shoes. I started by telling us shoes talk about possession. Please give the video a thumbs up, please, please. Do me the favor, give the video a thumbs up and keep commenting so that, that vi the video can be, it, it, can, it, can, be, it can pop up on, on, on some other person's page and another person could join us. Started by telling us that shoes talk about possession. So when God says, remove your shoes so you are standing on holy ground, started by telling him everything that you have believed was your personality before now. Everything that you believe was your possession before now. Everything that you believe you had before now. God says, strip it off because I want to start a new world with you. Whoever you have been before now, God says, I want to introduce myself to you. I want to start a new world with you. Whatever you had believed about yourself, whatever you had known about yourself, God says, strip it off. You are standing on holy
holy ground. This is the ground of encounter. This is the place of encounter. This is where I transform you from a fugitive into a deliverer. So you don't need to stand before me like someone who has accomplished anything. Just come to me the way you are. Just come to me the way you are. All I want is you. And, and then that thing that I've given you in your hand. There was a rod, a staff that he had in his hand. So all you want, all God needs from you is your availability and the gift that he has given you. So it's all about what he has given you. God doesn't need what you have earned for yourself. He doesn't need the titles you have earned for yourself. He needed just Moses' availability with the witnesses. With the witnesses. Because those, yes, the fact that you are a stammerer is a, is a totality. That's what will make it more evident that indeed it is God. When you who is a stammerer stand before Pharaoh and command him to let the people of God go, and everyone knows you cannot talk. Oh, oh, thank you so much, sir. Thank you. I'm glad. So this is Moses standing and then at that point in time where all your finances have been stripped off and all the all that oh my god please like it like it like it like it tell me thank you <laughs> as a matter of fact YouTube told me there was now a thank you sticker I don't know if it's functional. Can someone test? Let's see if it's functional. <laughs> so this is Moses standing at the point where nothing else matters. He has stripped off the fact that he's a husband, stripped off the fact that he's a shepherd, stripped off all he has is his availability and the gift of God, which was the staff that he had in his hand. So at that point in time, because most of the things that we work hard for, you've worked hard, you were considered a nobody. People mocked at you because your life was so messed up. And at some point you promised yourself that for this mockery that I've received, these people that mocked me will come back to me and beg for money. And you decided to bury yourself in studies and work and now you are earning money and the people every time they come to you for finances, you say, I told you guys I was not a mockery. Now who is at the top? And then all of a sudden, so what has been given you a personality has been that finances, has been your finances, that has been a point of your strength. Because you are still feeling vulnerable every time you look at your past. You are still feeling like something. Like you, you can't dissociate yourself. And when people want to, to, to press your bad button, bad button, they call you. They, 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 they call you the on are, are you not still the honoring that did this and that? So, so they know exactly how to get you back into your shell. Into your shell. Sorry. But then your money has become your defense. Your job has become your defense. Your successful marriage has become your defense. You being the first person to get married in your family has become your defense. And then you appear before God and God tells you, strip off that thing that is giving you a personality. Because that's not who I called you to be. Yes, you are, you, 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 I, I, I am about to bless you in no small way. But don't come to me like someone who is blessed. No. So, so come to me like I'm about to make you a father of many nations. But you've got to just come to me as barren as you are. So don't come to me like you are the father of Ishmael. Don't come to me like you have a servant who is going to inherit your property. I want you to come to me like... Like, 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 like Abraham, you are the presumed father. Come to me like Abraham, come to me like the barren man or the, or the man married to the barren wife. Come to me the way you are. So even when you get married to, when, when, you, when you have a child with Ishmael, God is going to let that child go because that child was you trying by your own strength to bring his word to come to pass. So he tells you, strip yourself of everything that was gotten by flesh, of everything that was gotten by power. I want to start a new work with you. And, and this is Moses now standing and everything that he taught. Yes, 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 Talita, humble yourself. 
in the presence. Everything that Moses thought made him him was taken away. And Moses says, you want to send me to go back? Who am I? Who am I to go back? Is this me? You want to send me like this? You want to send me like this? And that's the point where God always takes us when he wants to use us. That's why where he, will, he will most likely not use people who, 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 who are not able to let go of everything and just be who they are before him. When God meets you who is all tall, have a personality, looking good, oh, most of people who look good are not good. Most of the people who feel qualified and feel all good are not qualified. You doubt me, as Saul. That's why Saul will be tall as tall, a head taller than everyone, handsome, able to fight. He's a Benjamin who are fighters by nature. Come on, I want to see the comments going up. I want to see us active. That's why Saul, but God will dethrone Saul. Because every time you feel like you are, you, you are qualified for it, every time you feel like you can, you, you will never hear the instructions of God. Saul could not obey God because he felt like he was qualified. He felt like he was fighting, he was a fighter. He would never understand that every battle they won is because God gave them victory. He would never understand that. That's why he would go ahead to, 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 to even offer sacrifices and do things that he is not supposed to do because he felt like he was too qualified. But God is God, God is a God that likes people who are humble. The Bible says God resists the proud, the pride. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you so much, Pastor. God resists the pride. So when you come to him, proving like you own it all, God is going to really disgrace you and let you know that you own nothing. And let you know, and I like it when God wants to disgrace you. God will, will leave the soul who, who looks like it, feels like it, and goes and picks up a, a David who is abandoned, rejected, and outcast in his own family. His own family, father does not consider him as one of his children. Because every time, if you are not able to appear before God the way you are, if you are not able to strip yourself of all your own glory before God, God will never use you. So when God look at the people that God used, they were always at that vulnerable state that they will tell God, who am I? Who am I? That's why he will leave everyone and go to a Gideon that is hidden somewhere, threshing wood wheat in, in, in a wine press somewhere. And Bishop says, uh, and Gideon says, no, you don't understand who you are talking to. I am from the least tribe and in the least family and amongst everyone in my least family, I am the least of all of them. So I am not qualified. God says that is the reason why, why you are qualified. He will go to 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 to, uh, to Jeremiah and talk to him. Maybe if Jeremiah was it Jeremiah that God talked to call him a prophet when he was where and he says no no I'm I'm still in my, I'm just a youth and God says don't say you are just a youth. All you need to do is open your mouth and I'll feel it. The problem is that when you become mature by your own strength, you will want to say things that God has not spoken. You want to say things that God has not said. But God is looking for someone who will come to him and know that they are not qualified. Someone who will come to him and know this is all about me. Someone because the moment Moses says, who am I to go tell Pharaoh and tell your people that God says I will be with you. So God is not looking for someone who will go ahead and leave him behind. That's what Saul did. That's what Saul did. Because Saul felt like he could, he was qualified. He could fight even without the help of God. God says no, I disqualify you. I want people that will wait for me. I want people that will go with me. I want people that are there for me. That are there to wait on me. I will not use you if you can go on your own. So I would rather go use a kid. The Bible says, we came to understand that David was just 17 years when he was anointed. So God will go use a kid who will not have anything to say because he doesn't believe in his own wisdom. But, 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 but we trust that when he opens his mouth, God will feel it. Am I preaching good for someone? From mess to a messenger. So God gets you at the point of nothingness. That's why when God calls you, most often you hear the people say, who am I? I'm not able. I'm not able to do this. I can't do this. I can't do this. I'm not qualified. God says, yes, you are exactly where I wanted you to be. 
When you get there, you know you are where God was. God is looking for the unqualified because he is the one that qualifies. God is not looking for the qualified because they will take the glory for themselves. And God is a jealous God. He will not allow his glory to be given to another. He will not allow his glory to be shared with another. So it's okay if you were in a mess. It's okay if you have been in the wilderness. It's okay if you had been in that place of hiding. God is taking you out of the mess in this month of grace. By, the, by, by graceful upliftment, God's hand is coming upon you. God is giving you an encounter that is uplifting you and taking you from that place, from that wilderness place and is sending you back to where you came from as a messenger. You came from there because you were messed up. You run, you run away from that place because they knew you to be messed up and you have been ashamed to go back. Now that God has even walked in you, you still feel uncomfortable going back. God says he is sending you back there as a messenger. He's taking you out. The reason why he took you out of that mess is so that Thank you, Pastor Rich. I love it when you say that. God says the reason why he took you out of that mess is so that he could take you to a wilderness place where there will be transformation and then there will be an encounter like this encounter you are having today so that he can then send you back as a messenger. The same people that wanted to kill you. The Bible says Moses ran away from Egypt because, because Pharaoh wanted to kill him. God says I'm sending you back to Pharaoh. You are going back to Pharaoh now to confront him, to stand and look at him in the face and say let my people go to stand and look at him and say the God that I serve sends me so you are not going back alone you left there alone but you are not going back alone God says he is going with you and what do you need now God that I've stripped off everything now that I've stripped off my title now that I left my finances now that I left what makes me feel like me now that I left what I stripped off what was my defense mechanism so how do I do it how am I going to do it? what do I have God says what is it in your hand what do you have in your hand what is it that i've put in you you have a staff that staff is all that you need you have a gift that gift is all that you need yes you can sing that singing is all that you need you can write something out of the scripture oh pastor rich i'm talking to you that's all that you need that gift that ability that potential that's all that you need god says that's why i put the gift in you but when god gives the mystery we make is that so most often we feel like having the gift means god has sent us that you can prophesy does not mean you have been sent. Because sometimes you will have that gift of prophecy. I told us God is more interested in, in making you than in giving you. So he gives you the gift of prophecy. But then he takes you to a wilderness place where he prepares you and, and gives you an understanding on how prophecy how that gift operates. So the mistake is we have people who just say Jesus is Lord and their eyes popped open and they're out telling people what they see without understanding what, why they're seeing what they see and without the ability to, 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 to stop what they're seeing from happening or to bring what they're seeing to come to pass. God says you had the staff. You have always had the staff. But 40 years ago, I could not ask you to use the staff. But now that you have been in the wilderness for 40 years, now that you have learned from your father-in-law who is a priest, what it means to, to serve God, what, is, what it means to be a priest, what is, it means to be, to, 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 to be in obedience and in alignment with God. That's why I had to bring you the wife of a, the child of a priest as a wife. Because it was my way of pulling you closer to the priest. You have been on internship. So now that you have qualified, you have graduated from internship, this is an encounter to tell you that all that you ever needed has been in you all this while. All that you ever needed has been that staff that you had in your hand. You thought it was just a shepherd's staff. No, but that was the, that, that was the equipment. That was the tool that you needed for miracles. He says, through that that stick down. He throws it and it becomes a serpent. And he, and he says pick it up, pick it up and it becomes a, a, a staff. And he says go back to Pharaoh. Kayana Barasiana because God will not send you empty. God did not call you to, to disgrace you. God did not grace you to disgrace you. He will empower you for the mission. When he is sending you back Kazabrundara Sobrahanda he will send you back to the world where you came from. But he's sending you now, you are in the world, but you are no longer, you are not, you are no longer of the world. 
Once upon a time, Moses in the palace was considered Pharaoh's grandson. But now he's going back to the palace, but he's no longer of the palace. Oh, I'm preaching good. I know it when I preach good. <laughs> I know it. No, no, no. The Holy Spirit is preaching good through me. Holy Spirit, take the glory. You are doing a great job. So God will walk in you. Those same gifts that had been in you, he will send you back. Now you are going back into the world as a messenger, carrying a word from God. Carrying a word from God. Going to tell the enemy, let the people of God go. You are going back to that place where you grew up. You are going back to that place where you were once messed up. You are going back to that place where you where, where you fell. And you are going there now with the presence of God, still with that same gift. Once upon a time, you used to sing there and they sing funny songs and they would hear and laugh and have fun. You are going there to sing a song and the moment you open your mouth, the Spirit of God fills that environment and they begin to fall on their knees and, and, and ask, what happened to you? What happened to you? It's still the same voice, but something has changed. Because right now you are going there, you are going back into the world, but you are no longer of the world. And you are not going there alone. You are going with that same stick, with that same staff that you had. But that staff now is an object, it's, a, it's an object for signs and for wonders. You are going back maybe with that same finances, but that same finances now, those same finances now are, for, are an object of deliverance because you are going to win souls now by influence. You are going back with that same staff. At first it was just a staff, but right now when you confront Pharaoh, you can throw that staff on the ground and it becomes a serpent. And you know what makes it better? Because Pharaoh also has magicians. And his magicians can also turn their staffs into serpents. But the, the good thing that what I like about it is, is that your own staff, your own serpent swallows all of their own. Meaning the God that is in you is greater than he that is in the world. Whatever they bring at you, your God is going to consume it. Your God, your, your, your Holy Ghost fire is going to consume it. Whatever they bring at you, you are going back prepared. You are going back prepared. What am I telling you? Don't care the fact that you were in a mess. Yes, sometimes you've got to fall. You've got to mess up. You've got to kill someone and bury them under the sun, Moses. And so that God can take you to the place of preparation. Sometimes you've got to mess up so that God can take you to the place of preparation. So that God can give you the encounter. Sometimes you've got to get married five times. It's okay. So that you can be isolated. That way you will be able to come to the well just you alone at the point of encounter where Jesus is there waiting for you. If she was a normal woman, she would have been in the at the well in the morning where every other person was fetching water. But sometimes it's okay. God would allow you mess up. God would allow you marry five times. God would allow you to be called outcast. God would allow you. Sometimes you've got to thank God for the times that you messed up. Yes, you don't want to mess up again. But thank God for for for, for keeping you there. Thank God for picking you out of there. Thank God for working things in you. Thank God for the you that you are becoming. Thank God for this new you that is going to send you back right where you messed up. That's where the testimony is. The miracle is not in me messing up in Cameroon and winning souls and leaving from here to go win souls in Nigeria. No. When God transforms me, when God transforms me and then he sends me back to that same town where I was once the talk of the town. God will use you. You messed up in Samaria. God will use you in Samaria. Yes, the people you messed up with, those are the same people. Come on, Holy Ghost. Come on. Come on. The Bible says the, the, the woman left and went and talked to all the men. He went and talked to the men in the city. Let's go there. Let him not be like. I'm, I'm John chapter 4. Let it not be like I'm preaching my mind. I love it when I talk with evidence. And, and I know that even if I don't read, the Spirit of God will bear witness in your spirit. The Bible says, John chapter 4, verse 28. Verse 28. He says the woman then left her, her water pot, and went her way into the city 
and said unto the men, Thank you, sir. And said unto the men, It means that most likely she went first to all the men that she has been married to. Say, I just saw someone. I met a man that told me everything that happened between you and I. And went to the next husband and said, I met a man that told me everything that would, couldn't that, do you think that should be the Messiah? And the man is like, no, you are kidding. Our marriage was a secret. How did this man, this man is not even a Samarian. Yes, he's a Jew. How could a Jew know everything that happened between us? I must go see him. And the man comes out and is locking his company or locking his shop. And the people are like, where are you going this afternoon? He says, no, I heard that there is a man that said everything that had to do with my past. I want to go and see him. Maybe this is the Messiah. And people who are prophecy hungry are like, really? There is a man that can prophesy in Samaria. Oh my God, I can't believe this. Let's go see him. Do you think the woman took time? Out? No, no. God sent the woman back to. The scripture was correct, so why did you remove it? God sent the woman. God sent the woman back to that place. Okay, thank you. God sent the woman back to. She went firstly to the five men that she had been married to. And to the one that she was living with. And said, come and see. This man that I met, he told me everything about myself. He talked about you. He knows you. And the man is like, you don't mean it. He says, yes, I mean it. Come and see for yourself. That's why when they, and, and then they came. As they are coming, the families are coming. The relatives are coming. The friends are following. There was a divine setup. That's why Jesus said that the harvest is white and ready. He says, you guys think that the harvest will only be ready in, in four months' time. He says, but I tell you, the harvest is white and ready. Because I have orchestrated a setup that every five, every husband that this woman was married to is surrounded by people. So I have okay, I've divided the, the, the city into six groups. I've divided the whole city into six groups. This woman is going to go from one group to another, from one group to another, from one group to another. Oh, you feel the spirit. I feel him all over me. They, I, this place is saturated. May you have that same experience. I love the word of God. So this woman, God will allow you mess up with six men so that tomorrow those six men will be your point and focus of evangelism. Because attached to those six men are six families. Attached to those six families are, 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 are 12 people. Attached to the 12 people are 12 communities. God will allow you to mess up. But you know why? Because he knows what he's doing. He has it all planned out. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to take you to that future that you desire. Plans to take you to that future that you desire. Plans to take you to that future that you desire. What that future that you desire again? To be the, the, an evangelist of all time in Samaria? This is the strategy. The world may not call it a strategy. You, you may not know it's a strategy. But sometimes I've got to just fold my arms and watch you. Jesus could have encountered her when she was married the second time. He could have encountered her when she was married the third time. But he would fold his arms and watch her get married the fifth time. And watch her be with another person's husband. And watch her cohabit with another man. So that by the time, the day that he's coming, the Bible says there was need for him to pass through Samaria. Because he knew how he has strategized the city. The city has been distributed into six different places. And he needed one woman who was who was used to these, the, 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 the captains in all these six groups, to go back to those groups, because she's no longer going back. Come on. Isn't it amazing how every time we are sharing, God will take the same scriptures and open our eyes to something else? The Holy Spirit is amazing. We have seen this, it's like we have been seeing this scripture every day. Kaya Zabarasiana Barushaka. He had it all planned up. He had it all planned. It, it was a strategy. The problem is that you didn't know it was a strategy. From that place of your mess, you are going back as a messenger. From that place where you were messed up, 
you are going back as a messenger and your transformation is about to be the first evidence that's why he told the disciples he says tarry here until the promise comes he says then you will be my witnesses you will become my witnesses because i don't just want you to go out and witness while i was with you there was a time i sent you out to go and evangelize i sent the the, the, the 72 out i sent the 12 out and they came back testifying that even the devil fell why did jesus not end at that point he says tarry here until the promise comes tarry here until the promise oh there is a confirmation hallelujah i love that i love that that's another proof to say i'm in the spirit he says tarry here until the promise comes because when the promise comes you will become witnesses first he was sending you to go and witness but he says sending you is not enough he wants you to become a witness so when you go back now you are going back a witness is someone who has evidence you are going back not just as so as a messenger you are going back with evidence that god sent you you are going back with evidence that you are a transformed life you are going back with evidence that you were sent by god that you've been changed by god you are going back with evidence that this Richard, this pure fire that stands before you is not the same person you knew. Yes, the container is still the same, but the content is different. The container may be the same, but the content is different. You are going back and you are telling them, yes, this is still the same old me. Yes, still holding the same old stuff, but something is different. I didn't come on my own. I came here by the power of the Spirit. And these are signs and wonders accompanying me. These are signs and wonders accompanying me. Am I preaching to somebody? When you are going back, you are not going back as the same person that left. The place where you messed up is the first place where God is going to use you as evidence that there is a God that transforms life. It's the same place where God is going to use you as a witness for you to witness to, for, for him. For you to be a witness to the kingdom of God. That there is a kingdom that when you step into, you become this thing that I've become. You become this new personality. You become this new personality. And they tell you, you know, we smoke this thing. We, 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 we deal with drugs because we want to be high. And you tell them, no, you can never be higher than the most high. I am filled with the spirit. And you begin to speak in tongues. And the, and, 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 and the people begin to feel a power being generated. And you say, does that look like drugs to you? I have something that is bigger than drugs. You are looking for drugs. Drugs are belittling. I don't do drugs anymore. I don't smoke anymore because I've encountered the most high. And he is greater. He is higher. When you deal with him, when you are filled with the spirit, you are higher than every other thing. In this month of upliftment, in this month of upliftment, in this month by the grace of God, God is taking you out of that mess if you are still there and is transforming you into a messenger in the name of Jesus. I believe most of us have, have already been taken out of the mess and we are in that wilderness place. It is the place of encounter. This is an encounter. I decree that by the grace of God, the grace of God is so resting upon you. The anointing of God is coming upon you that you are going back with God and with the mantle of God and with the audacity of God back to where you left from, back to where you ran away from and you are going there in the power of the spirit with a message from God. There is about to be a transformation in that place. There is about to be a transformation in that place. I decree that God, this is an encounter. God is taking you to that place. I pray for the grace for you to obey. I pray for the grace to take away fear. I, I pray for the grace to be as bold as a lion. I pray that you will yield to the spirit. I pray that God will fill your mouth as with his message. That you, you will not just be a messenger, but you will be a messenger indeed carrying a word from God. You will be a messenger indeed carrying a message from God. I pray. By reason of this encounter, you are going back. Someone you are 
have been looking at some other person. Now that you are Israel and you are looking at them like Jacob, I, I decree by reason of this encounter, you are going back to that person and you are transforming them into Israel in the name of Jesus. You are going back to that person and you are transforming them. The grace to transform them from Jacob to Israel, it rests upon you. It rests upon you in the mighty name of Jesus. It rests upon you in the mighty name of Jesus. It rests upon you in the mighty name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. No more fear. No more anxiety. I break the chains of fear. I break the chains of anxiety. I break the chains of fear. I break the chains of anxiety. Kaya zobara subra handa la rasiana. Liana baru shaka liana la rasibra handa la rasiana. Li zebrunda rasobra handa la rasiana. You are going back to that same Jacob, and you are telling him, "Thus says the Lord. The Lord sent me to you to tell you there is more to you than this. You have known yourself as as Jacob all this while. You have known yourself like Jacob all this while. But there is more to you. You there is an Israel in the inside of you. There is a promise in the inside of you. There is greatness in the inside of you. The tribes of Judah, the tribe, the tribes of Israel are going to come from you. The different, the twelve tribes of, of, of Israel are going to come from you. So you can't stay being Jacob. You've got to become Israel. God sent me to you, Kayana Barasiana, to bring out an Israel from you, to bring out a transformation. God wants to use me to transform you from Israel to from Jacob to Israel, and you will not stop me. You will not stop me because if I've got to pray, I'll pray. If I need to fast, I'll fast. But you must be transformed. I will live to see that transformation happen. Someone, you've got to go back to that place and tell them I've been avoiding you. I've been avoiding you guys because I feel like now that I'm Israel, I have nothing to do in common with you. But God sent me back here. Yes, they will laugh at you. But just one word that the Spirit of God will say through you, they will not sleep the whole night. They will come back and they will call you. Say, tell me again, what did you say God said? They may laugh at you, but you have planted a seed. Kaza branda la rushaka. The grace of transformation from mess to messenger. It is falling on someone now in the name of Jesus. It is falling on you now in the name of Jesus. It is falling on you now in the name of Jesus. In this month of grace, God is giving us encounters. God is lifting us from the mess to places of encounters. If you have never had a tangible encounter with God, if you have ever never had that life-transforming encounter with God, God is giving you a life-transforming encounter in the mighty name of Jesus. That encounter that will keep you glued to God forever, that will keep you glued to purpose. God is in this same month. God is giving you such an encounter in the mighty name of Jesus. You will testify to the goodness of God. You will testify to the glory of God. You will testify. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Kaza brunda rasobra handa la rasiana. The grace is resting upon you. God is making his grace to abound towards you. He's making every grace to abound towards you. Kala zobranda la rushaka. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Begin to thank him. Begin to thank Jesus. Begin to thank God for the word, for what he has done. His word has in itself the ability to come to pass. The word of God has in itself the ability to bring to pass what it talks about. The word of God has in itself the ability to bring to pass what it talks about. Begin to thank him. Begin to thank him. Kazabarasiana barushaka. Liza brundara zobrahanda la rasiana. Oh, Elder Fire, you said something about the confirmation. Is it something you can share with us or it's personal? I love confirmations. It builds the faith of another person that God was indeed in this meeting. Oh, begin to thank God. Zabrundara zobrahanda la rushaka. Liana baru zabrahanda la rushaka. Liza Bararasiana. Oh, Nisha, are you glad to be back? Were you blessed? Nisha, were you blessed? La Zobra Handa La Rusha Handa Bararasiana. Lise Brunda Rasobra Handa La Rasibra Handa La Rosa. Kayana Bararasiana Barushaka. Thank you, Jesus. 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 
Oh God, we give you all the glory and we give you all the honor. We give you all the glory and we give you all the honor. Oh, thank you, Jesus. 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 Kaya zobra handa la rushaka. Liza brunda la zobra handa la rushaka. La zabara rasiana bala rushaka liana rasiana. Liza brunda la zobra handa la rusha. Liana barusha kalia la zobra handa la rasiana. Lize bruhanda la suana barushaka. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen, Pastor. Amen. So glad to hear that. So glad to hear that. Wow. Wow. They keep trying to find you. <laughs> You're embarrassed. <laughs> No, you don't need to be rude. Now you need to go back to them with the words. Go back to them now as a messenger. Go back and share those words. Go back with boldness and share those words. The reason why they are, they, they were, they, they are a part of your history is because you are a part of their future. <laughs> God use them to, 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 for, for, for the messed up history that you had because they, they were supposed to be a part of the glorious future that you have you hear that so go back now as a messenger say I'm no longer the mess the, in the mess I'm now a messenger so go back and deliver those words go back and check what God sent you to tell them their deliverance is in your hands God has given you their deliverance. Go back and deliver them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Did we receive the word of God with gladness? Hallelujah. Thank you guys so much. Thank you so much for being a part of this lovely family. Don't you see that when we are many of us, the spirit moves better? <laughs> God loves crowd. I'm, I, oh, I thank God for this level. I thank God. I pray this is permanent. I pray this is a new level. I, I, I'm beginning to feel like God is taking me to the next level. I'm feeling like maybe I want a one week at a week of Thanksgiving, and I've been trying as much. Who, who, who has been complaining after a Thanksgiving week? Who here has found themselves complaining, and who here has had to punish themselves for complaining? I've been so conscious about Thanksgiving. I thank God for everything. Whatever my, I set my eyes on, I tell God, thank you. And yesterday, I had a really positive feedback with my videos that I've not had. Like, I had a, <laughs> the views that I had on one of my videos yesterday. I've not had that. I've not had that. So, I, I just felt like, okay, this is God. My praise and thanksgiving is beginning to yield. So when I change how I look at the channel and I begin to thank God for, for Pastor Rich and thank God for, 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 for Purest Fire, thank God for Nisha, thank God for Monica, thank God for Tyon George, thank God for Talita, thank God for Eva. Who else? Who else? Who else? Thank God for AD. So when I begin to thank God, there is a difference. Hallelujah. Eddie, thank you so much for joining us. I hope you were blessed. And I look forward to seeing you again. I look forward to seeing you again. From mess to messenger. The word of God is ever fresh. You see, they can see that you have changed. They can see that you have changed. It's now is your place to change them. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Eddie. Thank you so much. Please, I, I would love to see you every day except Sunday. We meet at the same hour. 12 p.m. West African time, 6 a.m. 
CST and 7 a.m. ET. Please do well to join us. We would love to see you again and again. The word of God is ever fresh. We'll pray for you. We'll give you utterance by the leading of the spirit. We'll share everything. We, we, are, we are just one small family. You can join us. You're welcome. Eva, Eva, am I going to see you again? Oh, you're going for good. <laughs> Eva, am I going to see you again? Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much, Eva. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm glad we were blessed. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May he cause his face to shine upon you. And may he be gracious to you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And surely God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. This is the word for you. You are out of the mess. You are now a messenger. Have a wonderful day. I want to hear testimonies from these teachings. I want to hear what God is doing in your life. Stay blessed. Shalom.